What if Megami, Yuji, and Nobara all reach their peak? Honestly, I think Jujutsu Kaisen would not be the same. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Before we begin, please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel so I can keep bringing you more anime content. So Jujutsu Kaisen as a whole has by far and away one of the most interesting power systems of any manga or anime currently. There are only a few that probably contend with it, from the excellent power system in One Piece to the obvious inspiration for this one in Hunter x Hunter's Nen. So, you know, when we talk about could a character reach their full potential and what would that look like, Jujutsu Kaisen is honestly one of the ones that's, that's most fascinating to talk about, because characters that reach their full potential are always interesting. But when it comes to our main trio, their full potential might very well have been groundbreaking. So let's kind of break them down each by one, and then we will talk about what they would have been like as a whole. Yuji is arguably the hardest to talk about here because there's still rather large speculation as to whether he will manifest a curse technique or not in the series, and I'll probably revisit this concept again if he does. But even if he does, I think that him manifesting his full abilities are still pretty terrifying. And I'm also going to go out on a limb here and make an educated guess as to what his curse technique would have been in this scenario. So to start with, he's definitely grade one. He's probably already grade one in the Shibuya incident and already wicked powerful. Uh, he's a proficient combat master. He has very good control of his cursed energy, especially by the end of Shibuya arc. So I think that he doesn't have a lot further to go other than maybe learning techniques like simple domain. And I definitely think he should. Those are great techniques and he would make a lot of good use of them. But beyond that, I think that he would have to learn how to manifest a technique, and despite the fact that's not supposed to be possible, Gojo, for some reason, thought that he would be able to manifest Sukuna's technique. Truth be told, that would be awesome. Now, we don't entirely know what Sukuna's technique is, but it is largely speculated, obviously, that his technique is, you know, basically consumption. Or even potentially copy, he kind of has seems to have some variation of something similar to Yuta and Rika. But obviously not the Yuta and Rika from Zero, but the one that we know later, and basically consuming a part of an enemy is a big part of that. Sukuna is known to have eaten people. I don't think this is the best technique for Yuji, and it would be heavily dependent on whether he got the techniques that Sukuna already had or not. Which, even as I'm saying that, I realize we don't know exactly all the techniques he had. All we know is he has, you know, cleave and cut, and then he had the fire arrow. Those were the ones he had on hand, and... We don't know if he had any more, or he has a ton more. So that would have been interesting to see. But I do think that that technique could have been really interesting for Yuji. If for no other reason, then cleave and cut is very um, simple. You know, that ability is very simple. And it definitely pairs well with his style of fighting. Because it's not like he's very creative in his combat manner, but he's not very technical. So that alone probably would have been a big benefit to him. Next up is Megami, and Megami, to be honest, did not have a, a confusing road. He was basically already doing it right up until the, you know, the wrench in the manga, and that was basically, you know, master all of the other Shikigami, master his domain expansion, which we arguably won't ever see again. If we do, it'll be Sukunas, and I don't care about that. But, um, yeah, basically master those, and then somehow tame Maharaga. Now, whether he could tame Maharaga or not is an interesting conversation in and of itself because, as many people, myself included, kind of note, there's not a lot of evidence to think that he could. I mean, we're going off on the presumption that you would have to think maybe not all Ten Shadows users mastered all the Shikigami because you'd need all of them to master it to try and beat Maharaga, but truth be told, even that seems unlikely. Because if even if it is a rare technique, we know it's happened at least once before, and if it's happened once before, you presume it at least happened a couple times before that. No one ever did it. No one ever successfully tamed their Maharaga. And because of that, it's not a very useful tool. If anything, it's the nuclear option that he could do in a pinch. But beyond that, though, you know, there were other viable options for him. His domain expansion was definitely interesting. Um, the ability to make just infinite Shikigami on its own is a phenomenal power. There was a hint that it might have led to something else. But whether that'll happen or not, we'll leave that for if it appears in the manga. Um... And also, you know, a lot of the other Chikigami were useful. You'll see some of them later, but they were useful. I think particularly around Deer being a positive reverse curse technique ability really could have, you know, upped his other abilities. So 
he definitely had a roadmap. He had the best roadmap of all of them. It's just kind of too bad it's not viable anymore. And the last one is Nobara. And to be honest, I think Nobara kind of sits firmly in the middle, actually, between Yuji and Megami. She had a technique, but she didn't have a clear roadmap as to what the perfected version of that technique would be. Now, truth be told, while I know many people are big fans of her getting a Black Flash, and that is cool, I always thought it would have been cooler if she had ended up with a maximum technique. You know, you have Megami Master Domain, you have Yuji Master Black Flash, and then you have her Master Maximum Technique. And all three together have encompassed the three largest, you know, abilities that you can have in Jujutsu Kaisen. So, all told, that probably would have been the best route for her. I think there are other aspects of Straldale Technique that could have been utilized with her more efficiently, but that would have come with time. But truth be told, the power itself is quite simple. She needs a medium, she needs to have access to the target, and until that happens, she throws nails at them. And she can cause her curse energy to explode from those nails. It's not an overly complex ability, and it doesn't leave a lot of creative experimentation for her, but she was very, very good at doing it. And barring circumstances that she had no control over, she probably would have progressed even further than that. I have no problem saying that had she probably ever fully developed that ability, it would have been on par with Mei Mei's Bird Strike, you know, an ability that would have been terrifying to everyone that wasn't Satoru Gojo. And what all three of them would have been together would have been, honestly, there's a little bit of buildup in this that they would have worked well as a team. That's not very common in Jujutsu Kaisen, and it should have been. There was a lot of hinting early on that that might have been a facet, but it never was. It didn't materialize, and it doesn't matter now. But if it had, they would have actually been well suited. Yuji's a great close combatant, Megami provides great support, and Nobara can definitely finish a person from long range. Or you could swap that around, and Nobara can technically cover mid range, and, you know, Megami can cover from a longer range. That's the funny thing about their team. It's pretty flexible, and all of them are very good at what they do. So, to be honest, they could have been very much like, uh, you know, a free, ma a free person equivalent of Satoru Gojo and um, Tsuguru Gato. But, as much as we would love to have seen that, that's not what we got. But, it's still fun to think about.